Bible. What is that doing there? I don't know why it's been ignored. I guess that tradition is so strong. Yet in Saudi Arabia, we find something doesn't belong there. The world needs to know that this is not myth and legend, not allegory. This is real. I just saw it. The mountain where Moses saw the glory of the God of the Hebrews, where he fell to his knees in fear before a burning bush, and where he received the stone tablets containing holy law etched by the finger of God. Tradition, tradition, tradition has placed this mountain squarely in the middle of the Egyptian Sinai Peninsula. Look at this. This is from my Bible. The Exodus from Egypt in Norwegian. It starts up here, taking a turn inside of Egypt. Hey, look, they're not even crossing the Red Sea on this map. You see it? This is in the Bible, the Book of Truth. They have just uh, it started here, and then they're going down here. Sinai Mountain in Egypt. No, 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 no. And then they went up here? That's Eilat. That's Eilat. That's where Eilat is. And then they took a huge turn around, around here. No, no, no. The true route crossed here into Saudi Arabia. The mountain is here. That's where the mountain is. Here. In this official Bible, it's a wrong map. After 400 years of slavery in Egypt, the Israelites fled toward this holy mountain as they were pursued by the armies of Pharaoh. If you look at satellite imagery, it gives a wide, clear area along the western side of the Sinai Peninsula, almost like a highway in a place called Sharm el Sheikh. The book of Exodus records that Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground. The Bible says that they crossed through the Red Sea, and it was the mighty waters of the Red Sea. That's simple. We need to look there. The Bible says that Mount Sinai is in Arabia. Galatians 4.25 says, now Hagar stands for Mount Sinai in Arabia. The Bible says it's in the ancient land of Midian, where Moses met God, on Mount Sinai. Why aren't we following the clues given us in Scripture? This is actual video footage of their remarkable find, smuggled out of Saudi Arabia at great risk. They know that this has great importance. And they've erected a fence with barbed wire to keep people away. The way you built an altar in Egypt was to, in relief, cover it with gods, and then put a chief deity, a statue of the chief deity, on it. If a golden calf were to have been put on the top, that scripture would not contradict itself. It would absolutely perfectly fit. And he would have placed it atop and said, in fact, these be thy gods, O Israel, which have led thee up out of the land of Egypt. When you go there, you can read the Bible like a map. And it says, this is here, then you go for ten steps, and this is here. For lots of people our age, you have to smack them in the face for them to believe something. Most of the, today's generation doesn't want to accept things that they can't see and touch and feel. You know, when you show them something, like the Bible and what it says, you know, this isn't just a story that somebody's trying to teach you in Sunday school. This is something real, and here's the proof. Bow, too. That's like a person, with a bow and arrow. Where's the bow and arrow? You know, move something, get clear. It's hard not to believe. No archaeologist ever has found a scintilla or a trace of anything at St. Catherine's. Nothing's been found there. Yet in Saudi Arabia, we find something doesn't belong there. Egyptian artifacts in Saudi Arabia. From high atop the mountain, Jim and Penny see the V-shaped altar of sacrifice. The altar of sacrifice is what inspired us to continue to go back to the mountain. This is where the pillars are. And what are they doing there? These huge stone pillars. Again, civilization would have been required to construct these. It says in chapter 24 of Exodus that Moses got up early, he erected 12 pillars, he built an altar there at the base of the mountain, and then he brings oxen in for sacrifice. Recent excavations show evidence of ancient ash deep in the soil at this site. The 12 pillars were signifying the 12 tribes of Israel. What would we have for pillars? We found these white stone pillars, about 22, 24 inches in diameter. They're kind of a white, soft, marbleish type material. They would have stacked right on top of one another. 
uh, ancient Egyptian photographs show that this is a style of building, a, a pillar type formation. The Bible says it was of uncut stone and no steps. I mean, the precision of, of scripture in here is amazing because it calls out that this altar is located right at the foot of the mountain. And sure enough, there it sat. From that moment forward, it was my mission, Penny and I together and the kids, we were going to document everything we could about it. Because our greatest fear was that once the Saudis realized exactly what they may have, they would come in with bulldozers and eliminate it. The entrance looks small. It's 15 feet high. It's a big cave. I was able to climb into it. It's about 20 feet deep. There is a place for somebody to bed down in the back of it. One of the things I did is when I was walking to the back of it, I swung around with my video camera, and the view was awe-inspiring. see the golden calf altar, the plain where the thousands of tents would have been located out there. And we came up to a break in the rocks and I looked over from the north looking due south and both of us were just stunned. From a distance it's big, when you're close to it, it is enormous. It's four stories tall. And I've often said that the miracle that would have happened there probably rivaled or surpassed the crossing of the Red Sea. The Exodus account says that the people of Israel grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Your tongue feels like a piece of tar from a Texas highway when you're out in the desert. The sun is relentless. He would have cried out for water. And, of course, Moses heard their cries, petitioned God. Moses struck the rock, and it split right down the middle from top to bottom. The Bible literally says the water gushed from this. I climbed up the backside to the very base of this rock, and right at the base of that split, it's deeply gouged. And the rock on either side, if you look straight up from the inside of that rock, it's really, really smooth, but it's pressure flaked big chunks of granite have been flaked from the bottom and it, it's not a normal erosive pattern for granite granite generally from just wind and erosion will crack and flake off from the top down this is coming up as though something came flying up and really gouged the rock when that rock was split into a geyser erupted out of the top of it it blew those two pieces of that rock apart it's very interesting this part of the world gets a half an inch of rain every 10 years and it's so arid and so dry, yet this rock shows distinct evidence of water erosion. Not just a trickle, a burst of water flowing from it, washing out the whole mountainside, going down and washing all the sand that's down below it, creating a, an ancient lake bed down below. Now you're talking about anywhere from 600,000 estimates of up to 2 million people that came out of Egypt. If we were talking about a tiny little rock with a tiny little trickle, they would still be in line waiting to get a sip of that water. This place would have filled with water so quickly that that entire group of people could have come around the edges of this two or three mile long area and immediately taken their fill of water. It's very compelling. If you were to show the picture to somebody and say, oh, it came from Colorado or Utah, well, you accept that, but you say this came from one of the most arid places in the world where there are no rivers. The most graphic description would be found in Psalms. Thou didst cleave the rock in the wilderness, and the waters ran down as rivers. And that Hebrew word for clave means to split cleanly in two. There is no such candidate for any other site that has been investigated or is currently being investigated as Mount Sinai.